Hi folks, today we're going to learn about chrysanthemums, beautiful chrysanthemums, not the kind you buy at the roadside stand, but rather the kind that are normally called football mums. These beauties are four, five, six inches across and last a long time as cut flowers. The mum, as it's commonly called, had its origins in Asia, China, in the 15th century BC, where it was used as a medicinal plant. There are hundreds and probably thousands of varieties broken down into 13 classifications, some of which are shown here. While these plants can be grown from seed, that's not typically the way it's done. New varieties are indeed produced by cross-pollination of various, uh, various plants and flower varieties. The blooms shown in this video are basically of two types. Those that are groomed to uh, provide a single flower at the end of the stem and others to provide a multiple uh, a group of flowers, eight or ten on a stem called a spray. The ones you find at the roadside stand are, are typically called garden mums. The flower petals of the quill are hollow but they're open at the end much like the quills of an old uh, quill feather fountain pen. Spider mums also have hollow flower petals but they're closed at the end. They're raggedy in appearance to some but I think they're quite beautiful. Professional growers can cause these blooms to flower throughout the year. Amateurs like me will have flowers that bloom typically in October to early November. Four years ago, when I first started to grow these, I planted them in, the, in my garden, and uh, the next year I planted them in the garden as well. The first year, or the second year rather, a tree fell on them and killed them all. And then I finally decided to uh, avoid the frost, grow them in pots, and when a uh, frost was coming, I would move them into my, my garage and protect them. And that's the way to do it. The blooms shown here are part of my first year's effort. But the real question is, how do you grow these guys? What's the process? What are the tools you need? And what steps do you have to follow in order to get, uh, get these plants to bloom nice as, uh, as, uh, as shown here? What you really have to do for the large football mums is to train the plants to uh, grow two stems in a, in a single pot. Now that's true for the football mums and the spiders as well. But for the football mums as shown here, the, you, you train them and you trim and you pinch so that there is one bud at the end of each stem in your pot. And typically there's maybe two stems or three stems. There's only a few things you need to grow beautiful mums like this. You have to have an interest in gardening, perhaps, and you have to have a little bit of time to spend with these throughout the year. Uh, in addition to that, you must have some space depending on how many pots or plants you want to grow. Above all, you have to keep to a schedule. For the beginning, you should start with the football mums, a single bloom on the end of uh, each stem as the sprays are much more difficult. You get comfortable and then you can move on. You do have to follow a schedule as shown here. It's, uh, it's a year-long process, although not very time-consuming. The first thing you need, certainly, is plants. You can uh, take them from last year's uh, flowers, blooms, pots, or you can buy them new from King's. It's the only company that sells these uh, rooted cuttings in, in the country. The next thing you need is materials. You need potting soil, you need containers, small containers to start, two inch containers. And then for the plants, you need the larger pots, 10 inch pots or so, that uh, you will put the rooted cuttings into. Shown here are some potting soil and pots, but what you really need is the plants. This uh, view is the pots and, or stools that I had left over from last year. I kept over the winter and I'll make cuttings from them, dip them in root tone and put them in the small two inch pots. And after about two weeks or three weeks they will grow roots and at that time you can prepare to move them to the larger pots. After that you just leave them alone until mid to end June when you have to start thinking about cutting and pinching. Now the chrysanthemum plant, if left by itself, will grow as shown in the diagram. 
there'll be a, a single stem coming up from the ground and then it'll have, there'll be multiple shoots. Uh, you don't want that. You, what you need to do is to be able to trim them in this configuration with just two main uh, stems coming up. The first thing you do is in late June you take each plant and you cut it about six inches above, uh, above the soil line. Just make sure there are some leaf nodes below the cut point because that's where the new growth is going to come for your two or three main stems. During July and August you will trim the side shoots so in order to achieve the two or three main stems that you want from your plants. And it depends a little bit on whether you want terminal buds or whether you want crown buds. It's a little uh, tricky for this discussion though. During August and September, as the plants grow, you will begin to see side buds and side vegetative shoots coming off the leaf nodes. Uh, for, for, for the football mums and the large blooms on top, you don't want these. They have to be taken off as shown in, in these photographs. Well, up until now, you're beginning to wonder if you'll ever get any flowers. But at the end of August through September, you'll start to see buds, a cluster of buds at the top of each stem. Usually four or five or six buds now is not the time to trim the nails on your thumb and forefinger as you will need them to trim these uh, side buds off and achieve a single bud on the end of each stem. In another three or four weeks you will be amazed at the beautiful flowers you have been able to grow all by yourself. Well maybe with a little help from this DVD and phone calls and emails to me if you really need it. Well, enjoy your flowers, but don't get too complacent because it's time to start preparing for next year. What you have to do is take each pot and cut the top of the pot to about six inches tall, and we call these stools, and you'll be saving these stools. Uh, I keep them in my garage. You can keep them outside in a sunny area, but don't let the temperature get below 25 degrees. And by next March, you'll start seeing shoots growing from these plants and these are the starting point uh, uh, of this DVD actually.